Real news. True, honest, and not fake news. Welcome back, everybody, to another edition of Real News Uncensored. One of the f- last few episodes of our summer spectacular. Until we're back to the normal show every Saturday at 7 line, 90.7 FM. But I'm joined here, as usual, with Mr. Alex and myself. And today we have a bunch of big stories. We're going to start off with the one the media is not telling you much about, but we have been covering uh, extensively, which is the Tommy Robinson imprisonment. He's now free. Tommy is free. He won an appeal against the contempt of court filing that was placed against him, and they said that a new hearing will take place pretty much you know, whenever, probably as soon as they can get it. Uh, but basically they found it was a total, you know, kangaroo court. It was totally, you know, immoral and, you know, didn't follow a lot of the legal rules. Uh, but while the, the part they're not really talking about much and Tommy's slowly starting to talk about it is his mistreatment in jail. There were a bunch of prisoners that would spit on his cell because they allowed him to walk in front of his cell. Um, they would also spit through his window, which in a hot British summer... You know, that's the best you're going to get in terms of cooling yourself off. So Tommy had to shut it because they kept spitting on him and in his cell. So his cell was extremely hot. Apparently his cell was left accidentally unlocked multiple times. And prisoners were allowed uh, to walk in front of his cell and shout things at him through like a little flap that was there. And he could eat food, but he didn't eat much because when he would get the food... It was served to him by prisoners, and they were served by uh, Muslim prisoners. And if you don't know who Tommy is, well, Muslims hate him because he's outspoken against Islam. And they would say, like, little cryptic things to him, like, I hope you have a nice meal. And so he was worried that he was going to get poisoned, so he wouldn't eat the food. He'd only eat the food that the prison um, guards would give him, I believe, or anything that was packaged. I forget what he exactly he said he lives off of like tuna uh there's a video new video on his youtube channel where he talks about coming home i noticed right when he came out of prison he looked different i couldn't put my finger on why he looked different but later i found out he had lost 40 pounds in prison because he couldn't eat much during a day and he was sweating you know the rest of it away in his hot cell but total injustice totally immoral i mean he technically did break some laws i guess i mean it's really confusing but you know yeah it is really confusing but even if he did break him he shouldn't have been thrown in jail like this yeah, like one there's no laws on like recording people who are like at a, at a trial like i don't understand that and if that's a law that should be you know that's just antithetical to uh, free speech and what mm. the issue was was like it told me couldn't go to this particular like a courthouse to record videos and he was like confronting people who were like uh who are in charge of rape gangs and trying to go and like interview them he was he was being a reporter and if they want to say that's illegal then they are the enemy of the united states they're an enemy of freedom they want to go and talk about russia as being this big evil like entity but you see the united kingdom they're doing this and honestly they're probably a worse enemy they're advocating for an ideology you know they they're like engaging in uh they're almost engaging in sharia law at this point so i've heard that they're like they're honoring like uh mar- like child marriages if it happened in another country jesus and, yeah and, and things like this and it's just getting like more and more ridiculous how much they'll kowtow like how they'll treat this these people and they'll go and like let them get away with all these um like rapes and whatnot because they don't want to be called racist. They won't report on it. And then I, I think there was someone like who did a who did a crime. It was like a Muslim who did a crime, and they end up being let out because they were drunk at the time. And they're like, "Oh, they're mu- he's Muslim, so he doesn't get he doesn't know what it's like to be drunk." And they kind of got out of control. Which, if you hear that, like any other case, like we've had, uh, like what, like people who get drunk, and then you get like rape cases all the time, mm-hmm. and they could get And if it's if it's a regular Christian male, you know, they would get thrown in court. And rightfully so, but they they're just getting these sort of treatments because things are different in this country than they are in uh, many countries in the Middle East. But for Tommy, that's just absolutely abhorrent that they would give him this sort of uh, treatment in prison. And it's not surprising. I knew that they're going to do that. Like for the first couple of weeks, they'll keep him in like a decent prison, and then like as soon as the media stops paying attention to him, they'll ship him somewhere else. 
yeah. somewhere else. And then, like, they, didn't they put up a uh, you couldn't, like, report on that? Because like, they're, and they're, like, really crazy. People don't realize how bad England is right now. It's not even, like, a first world country in terms of freedom. It's a complete police state in there. Like, 1984, Clockwork Orange, like, with the gangs on the streets. You can't even protect yourself. It, like, I couldn't recommend anyone to go and, like, move there. Like, I mean, it's probably good in, like, certain parts of England. But, like, at least from what I understand, London, they've had more gun crime than New York City, which is completely crazy considering the fact that it's, like, next to impossible to get a gun in, in England from what I've been understanding. But they've had more of those crimes in New York City. Like, it's just become a complete third world country. They don't get the people. They have, they care more about people sending out mean tweets on Twitter than they do about, like, people committing actual crimes. And they have, like, a very, and this is why we need to go and have borders, because we see what happens. We need to have extreme vetting. So I think they had, like, a, one, of, one of these terrorists, they actually, like, got in from Syria, like uh, England did. I think I saw it recently. It was like uh, he did some bombing or something, and he was actually like uh, one of the refugees that came out of uh, there was like a campaign in Syria, and he came in because of that. Yeah. So it, this is just ridiculous, and people in England need to go and start speaking up about this. This has gone too far, and they're treating Tommy Robinson for doing nothing but reporting. Like he's he's done a bunch of other stuff, and that's why I'm sad because it's like. He really can't go anywhere right now. Like I think Poland did offer him something. Like I think that I think I saw a video of him. Like some guy from Poland like uh, offered him citizenship over there. Like someone important who would be able to do that. But I know in the United States, he's not allowed to come over here because he um, he illegally entered the United States, which is funny because it's like the one time to actually get someone who's an illegal immigrant <laughs> illegally coming in. It's, it's Tommy Robinson. You know, you have people. You have MS13 coming over here. And they right. had that one guy who, like, came in five times illegally and shot someone, and then they just get sent to jail for a weapons charge. Yeah, the Kate Stanley case. Yeah, but Tommy Robinson gets uh, the, the book thrown a out. A 13-month sentence. Yeah, that's this is just it's getting completely out of hand with what's going on. Like, why aren't people in England, like, rising up about this? Because I'm sure, I know there's probably a lot of people who are like, oh, this isn't happening in my neighborhood, but, like, a lot of people... It does happen in their neighborhood, and they need to step up. Like the police, you know, you got to – they need to be the ones who do something because they're the only ones who really could just stop arresting people for complaining about this. Stop going on to Twitter and, like, breaking into people's houses for, you know, questioning what's going on right now because it's, it's definitely not the place it was, like, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Like my friend's grandma was from England. She's like, yeah, no, I couldn't imagine, like – going back over there to some of these places in England. It's gone so out of hand. Yeah. Yeah, and to be clear, like, Tommy has 13 cent, uh, month sentence, and he got out after two and a half months of his time. But, yeah, England's not a free country. Y you know, <laughs> that's why we broke away. And not much has really changed uh, in terms of the way England is. But, yeah, he was, you know, charged for something that's, it's really immoral. Like it's an unjustified, unjust law, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I don't see. Any, he was reading publicly available articles from the BBC outside of a court that was um, of a Muslim rape gang, accused rape gang. If I want to be really, really uh, technical, and he was live streaming about, it, and they just said, "Oh, you're breaching the peace," uh, and a bunch of other stuff. And they just chucked him away and threw him in prison. And I think the judge is incredibly biased against him and basically wanted, I don't know if they wanted to have him killed or what, but they didn't want Tommy to be freely roaming the streets of London, that's for sure. And right now he's on vacation. I mean, that was the one thing that's nice was that he got out because they, uh, right when his family had scheduled a vacation, I think for Friday, and he got out like on Thursday or Wednesday or whatever it was. So he got to go on a planned vacation with his family, which is really nice. But when he comes back, I mean, holy shit. This guy, I mean, he's a, he really is a working class hero. The guy sacrifices more than any other activist on the right and even on the left. And he's, you know, generally I think he's got a silent majority backing him because I've heard stories like from Sargon and others when they hang out with Tommy there'll be people that come up like really quietly and say, you know, I, I appreciate what you do, Tommy. You're, you know, you're fighting for us. I love you. 
but they do it really quietly. You know, they're not very outspoken about it. And I can understand why, considering the current state of England, but it's a pretty scary case. And the mainstream media is silent on it, or they just lie about him. You know, they call him far right. They call, I've one outlet called him the leader of Britain first, which he isn't. You know, it, wow. it's it's ridiculous. Well, I think he like made he was part of that organization a while ago, but then it got taken over by more radical uh, racist elements, from what I understand. Yeah, I think it's EMP was what he was a part of, and yeah, it got taken over by like literal Nazis. Yeah, and, that, and that's kind of you know, the, and he gets a lot of bad rap for that, but he left at that point. So yeah. I mean, I don't know what they're trying to go and do. Like, I, I guess things are so far to the left that like you know, Sargon of Akkad would be considered like you know, like Richard Spencer in America. <laughs> Sargon's so alt right. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's so bad in England. I really do hope that things change. And it's really funny that they they're con they're technically like a, under leadership from like a conservative government. Like, they call this conservative, throwing people in jail from writing mean tweets, locking up Tommy Robinson, and uh, allowing, like, all this disgusting stuff to happen while the prime minister goes and, like, w wishes all the citizens a happy, like, uh, Eid Mubarak or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, And th this is England. Like, that's just absurd that they're doing all this, but, like... You know, they treat their regular citizens like criminals if they make mean tweets. Like, that that's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. I don't have much else to add, but I have another story of censorship and suppression, if you want to move on to that. Are we going to do that one next? Yeah, I, it's a good segue. In, when you come across the pond and you're in the States, we have this guy named Alex Jones, uh, which, I'm not going to lie, I used to not like Alex Jones at all, but once I saw him on the Joe Rogan experience, I saw a different side to him. But regardless of that, uh, there's been a massive censorship uh, campaign waged against him recently. So Spotify has removed some of his episodes from their service. A spokesman from Spotify told uh, Recode that Spotify can confirm it has removed specific episodes of the Alex Jones Show podcast for violating our hate content policies. That's his exact words, hate content policies. And within like the same... You know, past few weeks, Stitcher has kicked them off their platform completely. That's basically like a podcasting radio service. Facebook has suspended Alex's uh, Facebook account for 30 days. And Facebook and YouTube have both removed some of his videos that are on their platforms. Now, I don't care what you think about Alex Jones, but the claims are generally saying as their justification to remove these things is that he harasses people or he causes harassment or in Spotify said hate content. Well, I understand your private company can do whatever you want, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I don't need leftists to lecture me that. But I still think they shouldn't be doing this because they should follow the First Amendment because that is the uh, law of the land. It's the best way to create a marketplace of ideas, to exchange ideas, debate issues openly and freely and have a better society. You know, as a res you know, as a citizen of our country, they have. Res I think they should have responsibility to you know make things better. And by doing this, they're not. I mean, he's he's had some crazy shit. I'm not going to argue that, but it's not hate content. Even if you do consider it hateful, you shouldn't remove it. Okay, you know, somebody well, somebody finds hateful, another person doesn't. I mean, I find a lot of things hateful, but some people won't. And the, you know, this has happened like because he's had a trial recently about Sandy Hook because he had like these conspiracies about Sandy Hook and some of the families are saying that he you know encouraged the harassment that they got, um, you know stuff like that. There also there's also a defamation lawsuit against him. There's a whole bunch of shit going on. That's uh, you know, and and these things I think are acting in reaction to it, but it's just an all out war against Alex Jones. Oh, and here's the thing, too. It's happening on both sides. You get, like, people like Ben Shapiro yeah. who go out and just start, like, attacking Alex Jones. Like, come on, Ben. You know, there's bigger problems than, like, Alex Jones' followers <laughs> selling, like, you know, InfoWars merchandise. And, you know, actually, like, I, I used to, like, uh, like, yeah, I didn't really think much of him for a while, but then I started listening to him more. And then I see the liberal media attacking him so much. So, obviously, this guy must have uh, something going on for him. Because whatever, like, the liberal media hates, they tend to be, like, really interesting people. You know, like, they, 
you'll see like they'll give a billion interviews to like uh, Richard Spencer, but then they're like, oh, we can't give Alex Jones a platform. Like, how does that make any sense? Like, I'm pretty sure that like Richard Spencer at this point, he's like controlled opposition. But yeah. then you see Alex Jones and they just go and like attack him nonstop and they want him to be deep platform. And they get, uh, what was it, Sasha Baron Cohen going on with like InfoWars merchandise. There's InfoWars like in his, uh, I saw a television show. There's InfoWars, like, logos put all throughout there. I don't even know how he's allowed to do this. It's just complete defamation of Alex Jones, from what I understand. He goes and he says all this stuff, and then they have, like, multiple shows that portray Alex Jones-esque characters as these, like, evil conspiracy theory, like, nut jobs. Mm, like Tuck Buckford. Yeah, he keeps being attacked just nonstop. And obviously there's something going on over here and he must be speaking the truth about something. Like I'm not saying nearly anything. I'm not saying all that he says is true, but he's been right on a few issues like the gay frog thing. You'll see how they stop mentioning <laughs> that because he was proven right on it. <laughs> and he's like, oh, you need to go and look more into these uh, people around the Broward County. And then he'd go and see just like how many, like how many things got screwed up. I think I saw something else. Uh, I think it was today, like, the one of the guys, uh, he, there's, like, a psychologist, and they, like, they he was asking for psychological help, and they didn't give it to him. It's just, like, he's the one who gets this stuff first. He has researchers who actually do their job and report. Sure, they're wrong sometimes, and, you know, and sometimes it makes a bit of a fool of themselves, but at least they try. I it's mean, so they don't CNN go wrong sometimes. Oh, yeah, but the thing with CNN is they go and dox people. They, like, got some, yeah. like, middle-aged mom who, like, what was it, like, voted for Trump or something like yeah, that? Yeah, they're harassing her pretty much. They harass them, like, they cause, they inside harass one of this, like, one that uh, was, like, some just, like, what, like an older woman. And then they, like, completely harass the, uh, who's them, like, BuzzFeed, the guy made the Can't Stump the Trump video. But then Alex Jones is the one who's inciting harassment. Give me a break. He's the reason they attack him so much is because they're scared of him because more people like his stuff than like CNN. Yeah, he's like, competition not, for them. Well, yeah, like CNN, they have to go and pay people to go and, like play CNN. That's why you see it at the airports, you see it at the restaurants, you see it at like uh, private businesses, at work. You know, because because they probably get paid to do it. They go, yeah. oh, we'll get the CNN stuff for free, and then like they keep trying to go bundling with it, like my TV package. And I was like, please don't have me get a TV package with CNN to go and ask them <laughs> for it. You know, a different one. So I don't want CNN. It, it's just I don't want to see that. It's complete garbage for the most part. It just it just makes me mad more than anything else. It's they don't try to unite the country. They just try to go and divide people, and they go and accuse Trump of dividing people, and that's what really upsets me. Mm. I mean, Alex Jones can be Alex Jones can be a bit sensationalist, but you know that's that's what he is. He's not some big mega conglomerate. It's just some guy who like it started out with him being on public access television. And he created this whole thing himself. He he has no He doesn't have the advertisers because he gets <laughs> he makes his own products and sells it. It's an ingenious thing. And you see BuzzFeed and all these other leftist uh, places just like attacking him. He's a great businessman. That's why they hate him because he's this, a capitalism success story. <laughs> he does a better job of reporting the news than they do in many cases. And like YouTube's removing him and all this stuff. They like people in Congress lobbying, like, hey, Facebook, you say you want to fight fake news, why is Alex Jones on there? You have people in Congress, you have politicians attacking him. Obviously, he's doing something right, and you get all the wrong people to attack him. At least that's what I think. Well, yeah, there was a clip InfoWars actually put up on their channel where it's a bunch of panelists on Fox News, of all stations, uh, all attacking Alex Jones. They all say, like, oh, he's a terrible person, his Sandy Hook conspiracies are terrible. What conspiracies? This is what bothers me, is that they don't know what they're talking about. They're either fed talking points or they're just saying what's socially acceptable. Because they, they don't show any clips of what he said. They don't say what his conspiracies are, what's bad about him. They don't give any, you know, substance to their claims. They say, oh, he's terrible. Oh, his conspiracy is terrible. He's an awful person, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't mean anything. you got to tell us what's so bad about it. And that's what makes people say, well, maybe Alex is right. Well, maybe he's right about this. Because like I say, he has been right about things. The gay frog thing, 100% right. The uh, thing about um, the Samsung TVs that were spying on people, you know, CIA technology that WikiLeaks unveiled, Alex called that like years ago. I think like 10 years ago. The uh, CIA... Uh, uh, oh, sorry, not CIA. I'm getting them all confused. They're all kind of the same. The NSA mass surveillance of uh, citizens that Snowden unveiled. He was right about that too. You know, it's I'm not again. I'm not saying he's right about everything. He certainly isn't. But 
he has been right about some things, and that's what makes people question, you know, uh, people that criticize him and say these things about him. Oh, see, and then the, another thing, too, is just this, like, part of this long line of attack that they're using against uh, conservatives and, like, people who are on, like, the libertarian sort of, uh, that sort of spectrum. It's not just him. It's this whole thing where you need to go and deplatform people. You see at colleges and, like, recently, they had Lauren Southern and uh, Stefan Molyneux. They got deplatformed at, um, they, it was yeah. in New Zealand. They're yeah. supposed to go to New Zealand, and then they got, like, their venue canceled, and within, like, two hours of them, like, about to open up, and like, oh, you, you're canceling if you see on the property, we're calling the police. And that's ridiculous. And, like, the, the news agencies, they keep saying, oh, well, they were wrong about this and that, and they're evil racists, and they never show the clip. Yeah. Like, they never show what they actually said. They'll, or they'll, like, take a snippet of it. They don't show the whole context, and that's because the news wants to be sensational, and they feel afraid. They see this new wave of people that are having that are having these like uh, concepts and thoughts that go outside the mainstream, and they get afraid because they know they're going to be the first to go. They're going to get rid of the status quo. That's what they're doing. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. why they really don't like Alex is because he's competition. I mean, the guy has millions of listeners every day, millions of views on YouTube. At one point, he had more fucking subscribers on YouTube than CNN. <laughs> I remember when I saw that, I was like, oh my god, get fucked, CNN, <laughs> by well, Alex they, Jones. And they have to go and like, on all these platforms, you'll never see him on the trending page. They'll specifically, like, force him to, you to stop. And then same thing, not even just with Alex Jones, with, like, right-wing things, they... They banned the Donald from coming up on the main page because it kept coming up, and they're like, oh, this will make us look bad. It'll make Trump look like he's winning. Yeah, can't like, have that. And honestly, yeah, they can remove him, but the thing is they ruled that Twitter, you have a right to go and, uh, like, Trump can't go and kick people off because it violates, like, he can't block people because it violates their First Amendment right. So therefore, you know, Facebook, they got probably more actual people than Twitter does. So how, so couldn't you go construe that as a right to be able to have a Twitter, like a Facebook? That's a First Amendment place because we don't have the bulletin boards like we did back then. It's it's evolving. So if, like Facebook, uh, YouTube, they're the new like uh, bulletin boards. You could make an argument that he has a right to be on there. He's not like advocating for people to like harass or like assault or murder or, like anything illegal. That that's the thing they keep trying to get him in court, but they keep losing. And yeah. then like they'll say, oh, he's being sued by Sandy Hook victims, and the next week's like, oh, Alex Jones is taking money from Sandy Hook victims. Because of, like, lawyers' fees. And then, like, he even said he's not going to go and, like, make them pay those fees. So it's like they keep, like, rolling the story one way or the other. They keep spinning it in, like, multiple directions. And it makes no sense if you actually do your research. And it just really aggravates me that even Fox News, like you mentioned, they do that. And I used to, like, of all the news that's on the mainstream television, they probably the ones I like the most because they're not going to give me some complete, like, uh, left-wing narrative. Yeah, that's yeah. gonna be force fed down my throat, and it just gets really upsetting when I see this happen to Alex Jones. Who say what you will about him, he might be wrong, might go, and he's a bit of a character. <laughs> but you know, I don't think he's like out to go and be a like a jerk to people. He's trying, he's doing an honest business. You know, he's trying to go and make money for himself, for his family, to pay his child support, to go and uh, you know try to inform people and get people politically active, and it's. The, the mainstream media, they don't like it. And that's why they hate him. Yeah. Like, because I, I, I'm not going to lie. Like, I thought Alex was, like, this mean, angry guy. But when you watch him, he's fucking hilarious. Like, when he goes off on these rants with these, like, massive metaphors and he's, like, making funny noises and shit. Like, it's all theater. Like, he knows that. It's theatrics. He's, you know, he's, you know, dialing himself up because it's funny and entertaining. And that's how you get views. I mean, that's smart. That's what CNN jellies him for. Uh, but the guy, you know, uh, like, even with that aside, like, he's extremely misrepresented and, you know, taken out of context when people try to attack him. Because there's legitimate things you can attack him for, but they seem to attack him on things that aren't really legitimate, you know, sometimes. I mean, some of his conspiracies are legitimate attacks, but, you know, for instance, there were a bunch of news articles that came out that, uh, in his custody battle, they said, uh, Alex Jones's lawyer says that Alex Jones is a character. He's playing a character. But according to Alex and a bunch of people that were in that trial, Alex was, uh, you know, they were showing clips of Alex with Joker uh, makeup on, 
and his lawyer was arguing, oh, he's playing a character there. The press somehow took that out of context and misrepresented him by saying, oh, he's playing a character the entire time. No, it was just in this particular show where he was literally playing the character of the Joker, but they said, oh, he's always playing character. You know, that's not what they said. And now his lawyer, according to press reports, says that Alex Jones is, um, oh, God, I forget what it was. I pulled it up in a second. But they, they you know, they, what they do is they, they take things that he says, they take it out of context, and totally misrepresent him. I mean, he says that all the time, but it, it's just off the wall. And, you know, like I say, he's competition for the mainstream media. You know, he gets millions of views, you know, either which way, and it's gotten out of hand. Uh, they, they said they argued that, uh, his lawyer argues that Alex Jones is not a reasonable person. Uh, but why would a lawyer, yeah, it says Alex Jones is, this is from Texas Monthly, it says Alex Jones's attorney argues that no reasonable person would believe what he says. You know, that could be what, I have no clue what the context of his lawyer saying that means. It could mean anything. You know, so they're already trying to, you know, make him look like he's a kook, he's crazy, and Fox is cucking to it too. You know, I'm really disappointed in Fox because the job of journalists is not to misrepresent people and to lie like that, and that's what they're doing. Well, here's here's another like kind of a point too. They're going after him in a child custody battle, and they're taking clips from that. Like, how how low do you have to go, like CNN, to go and start using that stuff? Yeah. Like, come on, guy's gonna get his kids taken away. You gotta go and like give him some space. Like, don't attack him for stuff that he says with that. Good Lord, knows the stuff that your your like big wigs have done up there. <laughs> I'd love to go and see some of that. Yeah. Not, have any of that and don't have the connections but still like that's just a low that's a low blow and you want to go and say oh when they punch down we'll punch up or was was it that hillary clinton said but they're doing the exact opposite it just infuriates me but it's, um that, that, you're, you're thinking michelle obama's when they go low we go high yeah that's stuff like that they, they're doing the exact opposite but uh yeah so that's that's my piece for that yeah we'll move on to another topic yeah Okie dokie. Well, uh, this is a quick one, so I'll mention it quickly. But there was a assassination attempt on the president of Venezuela uh, yesterday, I believe. It was a failed assassination attempt during a televised speech where attackers flew two drones packed with uh, one kilogram of C4. Uh, which is a form of plastic explosives toward the president and his wife. And when they were trying to do that, one of them crashed into an apartment, and another one was, now I'm quoting from the AP here, quote, electronically knocked down. I don't know what that means exactly. They didn't elaborate much, but they could have hacked it or sent some sort of signal maybe that disrupted it, uh, you know, and so they couldn't control it. So I don't know what happened. But they now have six suspects in are in custody the president was not injured or killed obviously but uh you can see in some videos like people scattering when it crashes but uh, the reason i bring this up is not many people are talking about this i mean it's a fucking assassination attempt that's kind of a big deal and it's using a kind of warfare that you may have seen in video games and movies and you know other things depicting the future but it's actually happening where drone warfare or drone terrorism i should say is now a reality. Like, this is the first major incident of drone uh, terrorism. You know, we do have, obviously, the United States has big drones that fly into, you know, Iraq, Iran, or whatever, you know, country we're bombing people, and we bomb people with those big drones. But when I, I'm talking about, like, little drones. You know, two feet, three feet, four feet wide drones that you can build in your house, put explosives on, and fly wherever you want. And... I would genuinely you know, be curious as to see what this drone looks like. I haven't found pictures yet, but I'd love to know you know, what they did because we're going to see a lot more of it, I think. Oh, yeah, that's that's really interesting. They use that as a method of, of attacks. So I've done that before in, like, Battlefield Bad Company 2. In the beta, you know, I should go and sue these terrorists for, like, uh, infringement of copyright or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, that, that's not surprising. I, like, I wouldn't be surprised if this was uh, done by, like, some clandestine uh, operation to go and assassinate the Venezuelan president. Could be from the deep state. Could just be some pissed-off Venezuelans. That country's a complete shithole. 
So, you know, it probably cost them like five billion, like Mexican or like uh, Venezuelan dollars to go and buy that. And explosives is so like crazy with their uh, with their like currency. And it's like a really bad country too, because I just saw a video. Of, it was like uh, what was it? Like Vin Wiki, and they're messing about cars. Some guy got like three times. He used to live in Venezuela. Three times he must got like car like uh, kidnapped. Oh, like shit. it's they have like this stuff that they put over there to prevent people from like. It's supposed to be like kind of bulletproof glass sort of stuff in your cars. Right. It's not really bulletproof, but it'll like they prevent a rock from going through them. Like some guy threw a rock at his like a like a large stone, like when they're driving fast to go and like try to knock him out or kill him into his car. And it's it's just like a war zone over there. Like it's this is this is a big deal kind of, but like on the other hand, it is uh, Venezuela and the most real important thing about Venezuela right now in the news is all the refugees coming out from there and like the fact it costs you like two hundred US dollars to buy a roll of toilet paper. Of course, yeah. But yeah, that's it's pretty um that's pretty bad that they had that. But I'm surprised more of this hasn't been done. Like I know during the Obama administration, some like some drunk uh secret service guy was like messing around with the UAV and it flew it into the White House and went on alert. Like Jesus. I'm surprised no one's like tried that before. Like right when UAVs or like uh yeah, like drones started coming out and like being really big. It'd be a really easy way to go and like, you know, perform assassinations. Not even with like just C four, you could do like any number of ways. Like they could strap like a little pistol on it and have it electronically hooked up and just fire. I mean, that's what our like military does. But uh it's I I mean you might see more of that. I'm not sure because when we get electronic cars, I think that'll be real easy to hack and just like have it not use the brake pedal or mm-hmm. like have it, you know, just control it and bring it into a back alley and have people abduct you and like open up the doors. It's really scary where our technology is coming to. And that's the thing that we need to go and keep in mind. And it's not just like the UAVs, it's just everything. Like there's like electronic stuff in like toilets. People can hack into your toilet and make it like flush water up your ass when you're on the john if you really <laughs> wanted to. Yeah, that's they, a uh, bidet prank. Yeah, like they could go and do so many things. They're going to watch on your television. They could go and like have it. Uh, if you're epileptic, they could probably change it to a channel or like make it stream a video that's like uh, seizure inducing if they really wanted to. God, and, like, I feel sorry for Kurt Eichenwald now. <laughs> I, I, I can't feel sorry for that guy. Either. Like he's an absolute, like one of the worst reporters. Oh, he's I've a piece ever. of garbage. But, um, and, I, and another thing, too, is that what they could do is, like, people have pacemakers, like, and they are mm. activated by Bluetooth. Some could, and they've tested this before it's possible. They could just uh, mess with your pacemaker and have it kill you. And it would be, they could make it delete the stuff after you're doing it. And this is all, like, well known uh, things people can do, like, just with these electronics around us. And we need to go and take into consideration when you buy your next car, you know, before you get that pacemaker put in. Can someone like electronically manipulate your electronics to kill you? Like, yeah, you know, and UAVs, drones. That's gonna be another tool in the arsenal for a uh, for the would-be assassin. They got so many already. Who oh knows yeah. What the what the world will have to show next? Yeah, it's a legitimate concern. It's just you know, I don't. I like. I I imagine like. Like, there was this video I saw of this, and I think it's probably going to happen. Like, if, if, like, let's say there's a school shooter or there's some sort of terrorist and you need to take them out, like, instead of cops going in and trying to shoot them and not trying to shoot hostage or whatever, I think they're going to, what they're going to do is they're going to send these little drones in. I mean, really small. Like, they probably fit in your hand. And they fly really fast. They go inside and they go to the terrorist's head. And they blow up, so there'll be like a little bit of explosive. And I maybe I wouldn't say they blow their head off, but they'd hit him in a spot where they could kill him easily and quickly. And that would probably be the most efficient way to do that. And what gets scary is when those things are autonomous. Like holy fuck! Well, you I know? think we've already had that happen. That wasn't there that shooting a couple of years back where like this guy was killing cops and they blew him up with the drone. I think you might be right. It sounds familiar, but. I don't know, but yeah. Like that—that that makes sense for dealing with a uh, with a shooter situation. Just going to use a drone. It would take it make it a lot safer for the police officers. Not that I'm recommending this by any means as a way to go and like police people through like drone warfare. That's just dystopian. Like 
I have a feeling that's what's going to happen, whether we like it or not. So, yeah. I mean, get ready for the brave new world, guys. <laughs> brave new world. Um, yeah, I think we covered that enough. Uh, the yeah. next, the final story, I should say the final, final story, unless we think of something else. Uh, it's more been a story that's caught the waves on the internet, but the New York Times has hired a new person for their editorial board. Her name is Sarah Jiang, and what's controversial about her is that she, you know, has a bunch of skeletons in her closet. Uh, and when I mean skeletons, I mean white skeletons. I mean racist tweets against white people, or at least that's what people are saying. And you can look at the tweets, they're out there, they're basically like a lot of pretty nasty sounding stuff. I don't entirely know the context of a lot of them, but it doesn't sound like they have a lot of context to be honest. Uh, but the New York Times, you know, made a statement after people were outraged over it, you know, saying that they hired, they, it, I'll, I'll read the full thing. So you can really sink your teeth into what they said. It's like, quote, we hired Sarah Zhang because of her of the exceptional work she has done covering the internet and technology at a range of respected publications. One of those publications I think is like fucking like Vox or something, by the way. <laughs> so yeah, respected. Uh, her journalism and the fact that she is a young Asian woman have made her a subject of frequent online harassment. Oh, let's play the victim card right away. Uh, for a period of time, she responded to that harassment by imitating the rhetoric of her harassers. She sees now that her this approach only served to feed the vitriol that we too often see on social media. She regrets it, and the Times does not condone it. We had candid conversations with Sarah as part of our thorough vetting process. Oh, I'm fucking sure. Which included a review of her social media history. She understands that this type of rhetoric is not acceptable at the Times, and we are confident that she will be an important voice for the editorial board moving forward. Oh my god. And then, of course, uh, Mrs. Young had a short uh, statement of her own saying, As a woman of color on the internet, <laughs> I have faced torrents of online hate often along this vein. I engaged in what I thought that at the time was counter-trolling. While it was intended as satire, I deeply regret I mimicked the language of my harassers. Oh, okay, so when we go low, they go high has been thrown out the door. Uh, these statements were not aimed as a, at a general audience because general audiences do not engage in harassment campaigns. I can understand how hurtful these posts are out of context and will not do it again. And, of course, what's funny is, like I said, in the New York Times statement, they said, like, oh, she was imitating her harassers, and she kind of says the same thing in hers that she's counter trolling. So Candace Owens cleverly tweeted out copies of Sarah Jong's tweet. But she replaced the words white in them with black, and I think Jew and other things too. And Candace Owens immediately got a 12 hour suspension from Twitter, and it was lifted uh, within a few hours, though. Uh, so she didn't get the full 12 hour uh, time in Twitter jail. But it's funny because Candace Owens proved. Our, our point, which is what everybody was making, which is there's a double standard. You can be racist against uh, white people, that's socially acceptable, but you can't be racist against black people, Hispanic people, or any minority. You know, it's okay to be racist against white people, and if you're a minority that's being racist, it's okay, because you can't be racist, because power plus privilege. And Candace Owens, who is a black female a conservative, gets banned for, you know, "Quote unquote racist tweets," you know, because uh, she copied, you know, uh, Mrs. Young's racist tweets. She gets a suspension immediately. But Sarah, mm, still on Twitter, nothing to worry about. Yeah, that that the fact that they hired her is just really showing. And they said, "Oh, because she's an Asia, a young Asian woman, <laughs> uh, like that makes it any better." Like, no, that, that has nothing to do with it. I didn't care like what the context was because if it was anyone else, like as you can see with Candace Owens, you get thrown in the Twitter lockup and you would like lose your job if you said the opposite. And yeah. that's it's just like really me. It's not even funny. It was like oh, white men are like dogs. They just like uh, piss They're like dogs that piss on the uh, fire hydrants. They just like piss all over everything to mark their territory. Yeah, and it's like it's just like really hateful stuff and like it's not even like funny it's just like come on like i'm all against people just like firing people for saying stupid shit they did as a kid 
we've all said stupid things, but like they need to believe they need to go and just like sign an, an, an agreement to go and stop going after people for stupid shit they said on social media. Like we need to go and have a moratorium on this because like I as much as I like despise the fact that she's just so like openly anti white racist. Yeah. Like yeah. they keep getting and they like go after Roseanne. She got fired for like so much less than this. You keep seeing this now. It's like this open war on like people making jokes. It's like it starts with Roseanne, and they start going after these other people. And I agree because like they need to be held up to their own standards. I completely agree with that. But I think that everyone just needs to agree to stop doing this. And I think you know we need to go and keep pointing this out. The fact they hired a racist until they stop like attacking other people for similar things and getting them fired from jobs. That's not what uh, what we should be doing as uh, just like good people. It's just like trying to go and uh, like get people fired. That's a terrible way to go and like prove your points. Like, oh well, I may have won. You may have won the Twitter battle, but you'll, I'll get you fired from your job. <laughs> yeah. Like you see this. It's not even just like with the, this Twitter stuff. You see people like calling up people's businesses, and they'll go and like uh, SWAT people. That's like a thing, especially popular on YouTube. And, like, we just need to go and come and get together and have a, a discussion and just stop this. And Twitter needs to go and stop banning people for, like, for not for saying things about white people, but for saying things about black or, like, Jewish people. Any so people. I think that's one of the ones she did. It was, like, she replaced, like, white with Jewish, and I think that was, I, I think I saw that it was got her banned. It was, it was something like that. And it was just, like, really, really just mm, not very good that she was able to say that, that Sarah Jong. And like, not get any sort of repercussions. I think she apologized. Did she even apologize for like? Oh, she said she regrets it. Oh, okay. But, yeah. You know, if anyone else says they regret that or they apologize, it's not. No one ever listens to them. It's never enough. Yeah. But it's yeah. because she's a uh, Asian woman. She can say literally whatever she wants. She can just go and demean uh, a whole race of people who she doesn't even like probably know too well. It's just like this caricature she sees in university and on the internet. Like, I think she needs to go to a racial sensitivity class. I think she needs to go and, uh, like, volunteer to go and help out, like, homeless white people. Because, you know, the exact opposite would happen if someone said it to, like, black people. Mm -hmm. you know, this is this just, but this whole thing needs to stop, though, with, like, just getting people fired from things. I agree with them that we need to hold them to their own account. But, you know, it's just gotten so, like, ridiculous. And it's getting a lot of, you know, good content creators fired. And, uh, and like, you know, worried about their jobs and about their, you know, ways to make a living. Like, yeah. people just need to be, like, stop being so negative with each other. And yeah. I think that's, like, one of the big things with America right now. If we want to stop, like, people from, uh, you know, we want to stop all this negativity, we need to go and stop it ourselves. And we just all need to come to an agreement to stop trying to get people fired for stupid shit. But, you know, the left needs to go and start doing this, too, because they're the ones who started all this bullshit. They started with, like, it had with Roseanne. They did that to, um, who is it, uh, James Sam Hyde. Yeah, they James did Gunn. James Gunn, James Damore, everybody. They, they just need to go and stop with this, like, bullshit and uh, put their differences aside. And, uh, yeah, just try to go and be like it used to be before, like, the 2010s. Yeah, because I've, um, like, I sneeze. Bless you. Three times a charm. <laughs> I'm three times allergic to uh, fucking <laughs> leftist racism. You know, because that's what it is. Like, yeah, I, I look. I, what pisses me off about the left more than anything is that they have such a double standard. I've said it a million times, but like, this is the clearest case. It's okay to be racist against this set of group of people, but not okay to be racist against this group of people. No, racism is bad against any uh, peoples. I, I mean, it's it, that it's a principle. It's it's wrong against anyone. Like it's not okay to do it to anyone. And they, you know, say they think that, but they don't. So what I'd say to New York Times is, look, we're at a point in culture where it's okay to fire people. It's socially acceptable to fire people over shit they said years ago on Twitter or wherever. So you have two options here. Either you do that to everyone, which means you fire this girl and you fire anybody else that does it, or you stop doing it. It is really either one of those things, unless it's something like really bad, like they made death threats in the past. Like, okay, yeah, that's, that's kind of bad, you know? 
But you shouldn't have hired them in the first place. And that's, that's the thing about her, is that you know a big company like the New York Times looked into her shit. They looked into her background. They looked into her online history. They knew this shit was out there. Like I, I find it really hard to believe that you know someone didn't come across one of these tweets while in the hiring process of her. Because some of these were kind of recent, too. And you would have seen them. So... The New York Times knowingly hired a racist. <laughs> Let that sink in. Well, you know, if they're going to do this, I think, to go and equal it out, they should go and hire someone who used to be a white supremacist. Yeah, they should hire Richard Spencer. <laughs> oh, I don't know about it. Like, someone who, because at least she says that she regrets now. Like, find, like, you know, hire Tommy Robinson. That'd be great. He's not a white supremacist, but you know, that'd be the thing. Just do that. Let's see how that goes. I would love to see them doing something like that. If they want to go and claim to be on the moral high ground or this is okay to hire someone who's objectively anti-white, then we need to go and find someone who's like objectively anti-Asian, yeah. you know, at least previously, and hire them. That'd be great. You know, that would go and show them that they're actually not full of shit. But they are. You know, New York Times, they're a failing publication. You know, it's it's the New York slime. You know, it's bad. It's I don't really listen to it. I don't watch it. I don't read it. I might see it on Facebook or something or on the internet and I'll go and like browse through an article, but I don't believe like a word they say because they're so much full of crap. Yeah. And they, the problem I always have with the New York Times and CNN and a lot, of, pretty much any mainstream publication is that they act objective, but they're not. They act like they are doing real journalism, but they're not. You know, I, I spent, you know, a few days on vacation and all I had at one hotel was CNN. Like, I looked at the fucking channel listing and literally the only news channel was CNN. I was like, fuck. You but should have complained. I, <laughs> I might now. You know, that uh, we're away. I just come back to like, yo, motherfuckers. Like, what, what, what's this bullshit? No diversity of uh, anything on here, I see. And, you know, but at the same time, it is an interesting experience because... In some places, that's all you can get is, like, one station or whatever. Or, you know, some people only listen to CNN. I thought, okay, let's, let's see what, let's, you know, go into the mind of a CNN audience member. And I found that the difference between, like, Fox and CNN is that Fox is generally covering what is happening. Like, the stock market went up. The job numbers look really good. Uh, we just hit 4.1 GDP. Uh, Trump did this, Trump did that, Trump said this, Trump had a rally here. You know, that's basically the Fox coverage in terms of their morning and afternoon coverage. And the nighttime, it's all opinion stuff, and you, you're going to get what you get. With CNN, it is all about what could happen, what might happen, what could happen with the Russian investigation, what Robin Mueller could find, what this could mean for Trump. They're not really talking about what is happening. They're just speculating. And then you have people and they're, they're like, oh, I don't want to speculate, but I'm like, fuck you. That's what you're doing all day. That's what you're getting paid for is to speculate. You're not doing any actual journalism. You're not going on the ground reporting or talking to people. You're sitting in a fucking studio all day just spouting your opinion and your predictions, which nine times out of ten are wrong or extremely biased or just inaccurate. And... I've also noticed that all CNN talks about all day is Russia. And I'm not exaggerating. It's literally all they talk about. Russia, 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 Russia. I'm like, there's literally so many things happening. Like the uh, remains from uh, veterans from the, uh, not just veterans, but people that died in the uh, Korean War. You know, they were in North Korea. The remains of their bodies were being delivered back. They weren't even talking about that. It was all about Trump and Russia. Uh, it's all they talk about and it's just even during the daytime they editorialize things they sensationalize things everything is spun a certain way there is no like hour that i could find of just straight you know semi-straight news plus commentary like for instance fox at six o'clock has brett bear and brett bear tells you the news it's pretty pretty well done i have to say he's very you know factual based there's no editorialization, but then he brings on guests that will give their commentary and their opinions, but Brett Baer doesn't give his. And that's really the perfect sort of news bundle in today's environment. You give the facts, and then you give your opinion. That's what we try to do here. But 
on CNN, it's just all opinion. It's literally 100% editorialization. I, they literally are like a fucking tabloid. It's so bad. It, it's garbage. Absolutely. I agree, uh, I agree 100%. But anyways, uh, you got anything else with it? I think I already saw my piece. No, I, I gave my fake news rant. I'm, I'm happy now. <laughs> Same here, but I believe that's the last story of the day. Yeah. So we'll see you see you again soon. Yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. We'll be back next week with more Rio News. 